Okay, we're here today at the camp and we just want to show you a little project that we had going. We had some problems with a little John Deere dozer that we have. Um, Judy will zero in on this. I want to show you because there's a, there is some on the internet that show you how to do this. But we found there's some of them that don't show a lot of things that all the detail. And of course, we're not going to show you all the detail because it took us like two full days to get this thing done. So, but we want to show you the problem that we had and how we solved it. And that might help somebody if they're doing something related to this. So here we have the track tensioner for the, the track. And what it is, is you put grease in this fitting and it pushes the grease in here and then pushes this back, which actually ends up pushing the, the um, idler. That pushes it forward and it tightens the track. You can see how the track is a little bit like that. And that's okay, that track's fine. But we want, to, uh, this track was really dipping. And if you're going around corners or something, you could throw the track, which becomes a real problem if you do that. So um, we did some preventative maintenance before we did that. Wanted to replace the seal inside here. So you pump the grease in, the seal goes, and then it pushes the idle arm forward, tightens this up. So that's what we had the problem. Now we've got this all back together. There was uh, two bolts here and two bolts on the other side. That takes all that apart. And then um, once you pull the track forward, we've got a little hole here and we lifted the track uh, forward, put it over top of the blade and that allowed us to slide that out. So that just rolls right out because this just slides on this rail here uh, for tightening and loosening. So once we got that out, we took this apart. I changed the seal. It's not too complicated for that. This just, these two parts just come apart. You've got the piston and then the receiver part of the piston. So this, the piston goes in here. It goes into a spring setup inside here that just comes out sometimes you have to pry it out we didn't have any problem getting it out and then you just uh, you can put a pry bar in here and pull that whole thing forward slide that forward it comes out not too bad once everything's apart and so now we're at the point where we're going to pump this up again we've put a little bit of grease in that's showing that we have um, some action going on there and we're going to tighten that up so the only way you can do this is if you break the track and you have to separate the track. These are called the rails here. It's like a big chain, just like a bicycle chain, really. Uh, this is sprocket here. You can see the sprocket. And if you have uh, this kind of equipment, whether it's an excavator or anything with a track on it, if these are sharp and they get like, razor sharp that's uh, getting to the point where that needs to be changed because the track will start skipping these ones were done not too long ago they're still in in pretty good shape um we had changed that last year so and we changed the rails last year and then this went so we had to break in in the rail or the chain it's like a big chain like a bicycle chain there's always a pin that can take that apart on the older machines on the newer machines, they call it, a, it's kind of like an alligator clip and it fits in, it's got ridges on it and it clips together and then bolts together. Much, much easier, but uh, this, this required a pin. So what we did, uh, just come on around here and uh, you can see here when we were pounding it back in, we have a, a steel, solid steel uh, driving pin there and put it right against there that's to drive it back that way so we had kind of a similar setup on this side on this side of it so we drove that pin in and you have to use a pretty good size sledgehammer this one here we just got it uh the building supply this one's 10 pound sledgehammer some guys use up to 20 because you have to hit it pretty good so we punched that pin out and once you get 
once you get a certain distance, it goes quite easy until it hits this other side because the pin has ridges on each side and that's what jams it in there. So you get it to where this will come apart. So you punch it in far enough where this comes apart and then you can drop the track down and that's when you take the track off and slide the idler out. So as you can see, we built a little little bracket there for our pin to go through and that's where the pin goes through for the link that has the pin that you can punch out so we've been punching out that all day and we've got it to where it's outside of the center these two it's now right in here so now we're just going to drop this and that's going to take the chain off and then what we got going on here is we want to roll this idler forward once we get the chain off of there and the track. That whole thing should roll forward and we can change the seals inside there because they're leaking. That's our project. There we go. Nice. Separation, now we can lift that up, lift that track up, or just go forward once we get that off. Now we've done all that repair, we're putting it back together, and you can see here we've used a strap to pull this together so that we can line those up. Very, very important that you line those up, and I'll show you how we did that, just in case you want to... Uh, try that again so i had a handle you have to line this up perfectly i had a handle it wasn't quite right so i put some tape around here and then once this pin was out we're putting it back together i shoved that in there to line it up just right and then we started pounding from the other side to put this back in it was actually a lot easier putting it back in than it was pounding it out it took us about five hours of pounding to get it to go that way. And, uh, but we we're about an hour coming back the other way. That really wasn't a problem, but it's really important that you line this up. The other thing that's really important that we weren't sure about, um, but we found out that when you're doing this, leave that pad on to hold these together. If you take that pad off, then these can spread out these uh part of the rail that holds where that pin is it can spread out and then you're driving it against the edge and it doesn't move very far and i think that's what our problem may have been because we took this pad off um, so that it would be easier pounding but then when we realized that that was probably a mistake uh, we were able to, we put this back on and started pounding with it, and then it went a little better. But it's really important that you don't spread this out uh, and you keep that pad on. So you have to make your little brackets so that you can keep that pad on, the one that's holding the pin. Very, very important that we found out. If you like the video, hit like, and you can just subscribe to our YouTube channel. We like that as well. And of course, we got all kinds of things on there. We're off grid and uh, we have some biblical videos that you might want to check out with watching what's going on in the world. Uh, it's a good idea to know how that all is going to end. So do like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you later.